The Aviators was made possible by... When the unexpected happens, the Lifesaver provides one hour of emergency attitude reference, giving you the time you need to land safely. In a mission's darkest moment, trust Mid-Continent Instruments. Now for the first time on TV, the stories and reports of the people who fly and the aircraft they fly. And you are invited in an exciting, pulse-pumping new television series designed for everyone who has ever gazed skywards and dreamt of slipping the bonds of Earth. The Aviators. This week on The Aviators, we sit down with Mikey McBrien of TV's Ice Pilots. You've ever been to Oshkosh before? I've never been to Oshkosh. In fact, I've never been to Wisconsin. We travel to the far north on the Midnight Sun Challenge. Awesome. Just awesome. And we take you on the flight of a lifetime aboard the Goodyear Blimp. From the Boundary Bay Airport, this is The Aviators. Lighter-than-air flight is the oldest form of aviation known to man. Steerable airships, known as dirigibles, date back to the 19th century. The Goodyear Blimp is one of the most well-known and recognizable of these vessels flying today. While making appearances in the skies all across the country, the Aviator's crew recently had a chance to get up close to the Blimp. Curtis spoke to one of the Blimp's pilots, Jerry Hassem, before he got a chance to experience lighter-than-air flight firsthand. You can't think of a blimp without thinking of the word Goodyear. For seemingly forever, Goodyear has operated blimps across North America. We're here with Jerry Hessem, one of the Goodyear pilots from Akron, Ohio. Jerry, how long has Goodyear been operating blimps? It goes back to 1926, and our first public relations blimp was named the Pilgrim. And we've had public relations blimps ever since. And so how has blimp design and blimp operation changed since 1925? The basic design is pretty standard, but the new things you'll see is the technology, which is in the cockpit and also in the uh, instrumentation a little bit. Unlike Zeppelins, which have a rigid internal frame, blimps are designed with a non-rigid airbag, also known as an envelope. The envelope is filled with a lifting gas, which supports the blimp's shape. A rigid structure known as a gondola is attached to the bottom of the airbag and is designed to carry the pilot and passengers. Engines at the rear of the gondola provide propulsion, while the traditional rudder and elevators provide the aerodynamic controls. This type of flying does have its own quirks, and Goodyear only hires pilots who are already licensed on more traditional aircraft. Now, one of the first things that comes to my mind is, how do you get interested? How do you become a blimp pilot? Each pilot has his own story, but I started as an AMP mechanic with a Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And I also had my fixed wing license commercially, and that's how I got started with Goodyear. I spent time as a mechanic, then moved into the pilot's position. So you actually worked on the blimps before you flew them? Yes, I did. Wow, that's quite a transition. And it was quite challenging, because usually aircraft are stationary, but the blimp moves on the mast all the time, so that's a, that was quite a challenge. So now where does a person go to actually get a blimp license? Presumably you didn't have that when you started. Uh, we train right in Goodyear, and you come to Goodyear with a commercial helicopter license or a commercial fixed wing license. Uh, we train the pilot in the left seat, and it takes about three to 400 hours and about six to 12 months of training. Curtis was lucky enough to ride along with Jerry on a flight. Getting the blimp up in the air, however, is an interesting experience. Takeoff in the Goodyear blimp is unlike any other aircraft. The gas used in the blimp is helium, which provides constant lift and pulls the blimp away from the earth. Because of this, the airship is either constantly tethered to a mast or held by the ground crew. If the ground crew were to let go or the airship broke free of its tether, it would simply float away. While this would get the blimp into the air eventually, it would neither be an efficient nor a controllable way of traveling. So instead, the ground crew actually bounces the ship off the ground. The pilot then puts the engines to full throttle and tilts the elevators all the way back and the ship takes off in dramatic fashion. While gaining altitude, the aircraft pitches up at an angle of 15 degrees. Once the blimp reaches its cruising altitude of 1,500 feet, Jerry levels off the airship. 
we'll get this thing tuned up right here and ready for a nice cruise flight around the facility. Now the ship's going to pitch up and down like this because just because of the air currents, thermals. Okay. So that's typically normal for the ship. So you're not doing it just to put on a show and attract attention? No, because so I don't go up in altitude, i got to pitch over a little bit. So now we've got a whole lot of helium in here keeping us in the air. What's the weight of this ship right now? Uh, everything together about 12,500 pounds. So 12,500 pounds take how many cubic feet of, of high helium? Uh, 200 to 800. So 202,800. Wow. So there's no fancy propulsion controls. These are all just the rudder and elevators we see at the back of the ship. Yeah, this, is, this wheel controls my elevators, which controls the pitch on the bag, which controls our dynamic lift. So if I want to descend, I'll roll this wheel down. It'll lower the bag. And if we look at our VSI over here, we have we're descent, in descent. Right? Yep. Conversely, it's like pulling back on the yoke of an airplane. I'll pull back on this wheel. It will pitch the bag up which we all know kind of increases the dynamic lift. And lo and behold, we look down our VSI and we have a climb going. Now one of the things that's so interesting to me about a blimp is in an airplane when you're flying, if you pitch the nose up, your speed tends to bleed. And if you pitch the nose down, you tend to increase speed. What about a blimp? Very slight variations. So we do 30 very, miles an hour up? Yeah, 30, 30 miles, miles an hour down. down. Very slight variations. Steering, turning left and right, it's accomplished by pure yaw. The pedals down in front control the rudders back and forth like a rudder of a boat. So if I want to go left, I'll push that left rudder and these are geared and the other one will come back towards me. Then we'll go into a left turn. The controls are like a conventional airplane and they have to have air flowing over them for the function then. Yeah, exactly. And you had mentioned how we arrest Stop the stop the movement. Watch this. You go a little bit opposite rudder. Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Then you neutralize. And there you have it, right there. I mean, that's it. As you remember, you have 12,000 pounds moving in one direction, so it takes time and opposite force to stop the turn. Now it sounds kind of silly, but it feels like we're just sort of sitting here floating. There's no real sensation of movement or. Not the usual yeah, sensations you feel in an airplane. An airplane, correct. And it's just more like floating. Floating, and you're almost like you're in a bubble. The blimp floats along at speeds of just 30 to 35 miles per hour. This allows the occasional lucky passenger to really take in the earth around them. And if the weather is right, you can even open the windows and feel the breeze moving past. So now there's two engines at the back of this blimp that power us. What, what kind of engines are they? Those are Continental IO360s. They're injected, opposed, and 360 cubic inches. 200 horsepower airplane engines, basically. 210 horsepower engines, and they're uh, six cylinders. Now, the propellers on this being fully reversing, that's a bit unusual for, uh, for a fixed-wing airplane with a piston and power plant. You're exactly right. We can go into beta and reverse in flight, which you're not going to see too often. As the blimp moves through the air, the pressure inside the envelope can fluctuate. Two compartments within the blimp, called ballonets, are filled with air and are designed to balance out the pressure. As the helium inside the envelope expands, Jerry has to vent air out of the ballonets. If the helium were to contract, scoops behind the engines can pull air back into the ballonets. Not maintaining careful, constant pressure would cause the envelopes to lose their shape and could potentially collapse. This careful pressure dance, along with the sheer size of the blimp, can make for some interesting flying. So what do you think are some of the most uh, tricky things about learning to fly a blimp? Learning to fly a blimp is different from the aircraft because an aircraft you're used to having a wide open runway in front of you, 3,000 feet, 5,000 feet. With a blimp, as you see, we're landing in Pioneer Field tight area. Yeah. So I've got to be used to obstacles. I have to be used to uh, the size of the airship. It's 200 foot long, 192 to be exact, but it's a large, I have 100 feet in front of me and 100 feet behind me, so i got to be aware of that. So those are some of the things I'm concerned about. Also, I'm concerned about the winds. Sometimes the winds shift a little bit back and forth, and we have such a large sail area 
the ship could be, you know, turned a little bit. So I have to anticipate that. That's why the crew chief holds a windsock all the time, so I can see exactly what the wind's doing before I get there. So now you actually fly this blimp to all the different events that you uh, that you fly over. You're right. The ship flies wherever it goes. So when we have to move it, we put two pilots in here, and we'll fly. We'll share the duties. We'll fly an hour on and an hour off in the ship. And we usually, our travels take us about eight to 10 hours a day, but it's all based on distance. Okay. And when we get to our destination, we'll put the mast up that you see on Pioneer Field there, and we'll put the ship on it, go to the hotel, have a good dinner, and get up the next day and move. Operating a blimp is not as simple as some might think. Pressure within the envelope has to be maintained even while on the ground, and takeoff and landing require the help of a sizable ground crew. Now, logistically, there was a whole lot of people that had a hold of those ropes. How many people travel with the blimp? Uh, there's 21 of us on the road, 16 crew members, four pilots, and one public relations manager. That comprises the crew. And also, you probably saw the vehicles on the ground. We have a tour bus and a tractor trailer rig that houses all our tools and spare equipment for the airship. Now you mentioned that somebody's with this blimp 24 hours a day when it's on the road. So somebody guards this all the time, even when it's in the hangar? You're exactly right. Even at uh, the hangar watch, somebody will be there. So when we're back in the hangar, the, the ship will be watched. So from birth to retirement, somebody's watching over this airship 24 hours a day? Correct. Landing the Spirit of Goodyear is extremely complicated and requires Jerry's full concentration. We can see the runway at Pioneer Airfield in Oshkosh, and we can see the uh, the crew members, the 16 crew members lined up in a V formation. And in the middle, we can see somebody's holding a windsock, which is helping Jerry get an idea of exactly which way he's got to approach. When the blimp lands and takes off, it does so directly into the wind. At the same time, he's managing the energy of the airplane. He needs, or the blimp rather, because he needs enough air to make the control services effective so he can control our approach. But he's got to get this 12,000 pounds of blimp slowed down so that these 16 people on the ground can actually catch us when we get close. Ground handling is definitely low tech and hasn't changed much in 80 years. Two groups of four handlers run in and grab each of the two bow lines on the airship. Holding these lines keeps the ship steady as another group pulls the ship to the ground. Well, that was super smooth and super impressive, Jerry. I can't say thank Enjoy you it. enough. Yep, you're welcome. My that pleasure. That was really incredible. What an My opportunity pleasure. of a lifetime. The Goodyear blimp flies low and slow. It can only carry six passengers, and it takes gobs of manpower to maintain. However, this majestic giant is the perfect platform for aerial photography and can provide the ride of a lifetime. But the real achievement for this flying machine is that it's burned the name Goodyear into the minds of several generations of Americans. The Aviators, for everyone who has ever gazed skywards, for more information on today's segments, visit www.theaviators.tv.